Hello everyone, my name is Aston, and today I'm going to show you 25 Pro Tools keyboard shortcuts that you might find useful. Now one important thing to note before we get started is that the way Pro Tools works is that it treats the numbers at the top of the keyboard and the numbers on the number pad differently. So if you have a stupid keyboard like mine, you're going to notice you don't have a number pad, and that's why I recommend that you get one of these Bluetooth number pads on Amazon. It'll be of great use to you. Our first shortcut is zoom in and out horizontally with R and T. As you see here, it zooms in and out. But one thing you should note is that up at the top right there's this AZ button that needs to be lit up yellow. This is the single key commands button. If this is not lit up and you try to press R and T, it will not work. There are many single key commands within Pro Tools and this has to be lit up for you to use any of them. Our next shortcut is return. Note that I'm not saying enter, it's return, which is over the arrow keys on the keyboard. Say that I'm over at this 19th measure over here and I want to get back and listen to the track from the beginning. If I just hit return, it takes me right back to the beginning. Next up we have insertion follows playback. So if I click right over here and I zoom in real close, you'll see that if I hit play right here, and I let it go, and then I let it stop, where the marker is now is where I stopped the playback. But if I hit N and I go back to where I was before or about where I was before and then hit play and then stop, it goes back to where I started playing the original clip. So if you're at the start of a section and you really need to hear the transition of something and you're trying to listen over and over again and you really want to dial that in, you want to make sure that insertion follows playback is off so that every time you hit play, and then stop, it goes back to where you want it to go. So for our next shortcut, we're gonna head over to the mix window over here. Say I just wanna to listen to this snare. I have it soloed right now and I hit play. So you could hear just the snare, but what I had is that I was going to this reverb track and it had a bunch of reverb on it. Way too much, honestly, but it's just for demonstration. So what I could do is I could just hold shift and also solo this, but if I have this send on multiple tracks, that's really not gonna matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solo safe this, and that means that if anything else in the track is soloed, that means that this track is still going to play regardless. So when we listen back, we can hear that ridiculous snare with all that reverb on it. Our next shortcut is more general, but I'll try to give you some specific examples. If I hold option and change something on one track, it's going to change that thing on every single track in the project. So, for instance, if I go over to kick over here, and it's going to built-in output 1 and 2, if I hold option and select no output, there's going to be no outputs for any track. And also, if I go to the second send, and I hold option, and I make it go to bus 3 and 4, it's going to make it for every track. Our next one is just a modification of what we were doing before. So if option means to change everything. Shift option means to change everything within a selection. So for this, I'm going to select Tom's through room. And with this, I'm going to hold shift and option, go up to the input, and I'm going to select bus three and four for all of them. And it changed Tom's hi-hats, ride, and room, but it did not change kick, snare, overheads, or any of the other tracks. The same works for inserts or sends too. If I want to put a compressor on these four tracks, it'll put it on all four tracks. This next one can very easily get you out of a jam when you're way into the mixing process and you're really making those fine-tune adjustments. So for this overheads, I want to move this fader to exactly minus 3.9 decibels. So I click and I drag it and I'm not quite getting there. I'm getting 3.8 and 4.1. If I hold command as I'm clicking down on it, I can adjust it by smaller amounts. And I got my 3.9. Just ignore that that happened. 3.9. For our next shortcut, I'm gonna take us back to the edit window over here and select this one clip over here. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see it. I'm gonna go over to the number pad and hit the plus and minus buttons and I will nudge it based on this value I've set up here. Great, right? So if we zoom in at the very beginning of this overhead track, we'll see that there's just silence for the beginning of it, and we don't really need that. So we're going to select where we want our cursor to be right here, and we're going to say everything before this is going to get deleted. 
And with that, we're going to hit A. It's gone. Conversely, we're going to go all the way to the end here. We're going to say, OK, well, the overheads are going to trail out quite a bit. So we're going to give it a bit of room. We're going to say right at this 50 second measure right here, we're going to hit S. It's gone. We trimmed it to where we wanted it to be. Now this next one ties into what I was talking about before. So say I want to make a fade out to make sure that this overhead doesn't just cut out in the middle of it naturally fading out. So say from 51 all the way to the end, I want to make a fade out. I'm going to hit G. There. Simple fade. So okay, we trimmed our track, we faded it to the end, but now I don't like this kind of fade. I'm going to click on it, I'm going to hit Command F. That brings up the fades menu. So now we have a variety of options here. We can do equal gain or equal power, change the shape of it. We can change the shape here as well. We can do an S curve. Um, we have all of these options over here. We can just do that, which is not a fade at all, really. We can do this. We can do a whole bunch of things. Say that I really want to dive in to like one measure of audio and really tell if I made a mistake in my playing or if there's some weird audio glitch or something. So I select measures 44 through 45 and I hit play. Okay, well that was nice, but I kind of want to hear it over and over again so I can really tell. So I'm going to hit Shift Command L. And now when I play it, it just keeps repeating over and over. Isn't that great? So for this next one, we've got quite a few options here. And it really just depends on how you want to do it, personal preference and all that. So I'm, I'm on this scratch verse track right now. I set my input. I'm going to record enable the track. And so now you can see that there's a waveform coming in. It's just my voice, what you're hearing right now, ironically enough. Now the three different ways to do this depend on your settings on your computer, actually. One of them is Command Spacebar. And when I do that, I end up with that. You can turn it off. I just haven't. I don't want to. The other one is F12. That's what happens when I hit F12. Now I can get around that by hitting Function F12 if I want to, but the goal is to save as much time as possible. So if I can do something in one button press as opposed to two, I'm going to do it in one button press. So the one that I'm going to recommend that you do is three on the number pad. So I'm going to record enable the track, and then I'm going to press record. I am talking fun, fun, fun. This next shortcut goes off of the one that we were just doing. So say I'm in the middle of the take, and I mess up bad. I don't even want to continue the take. I just want to get rid of it and never see it again. So I'll hit record, record. Oh, I messed up. I don't like it. What am I going to do? I'm going to hit command period. That clip is gone forever. Normally what happens when you record a clip, stop it, and then delete it is that it stays in your clip list over here on the right. However, if you use command period, you cannot undo it. You cannot get it back. It is permanent. So only use it when you're sure that you've recorded something that you don't want to keep. This next shortcut is if you're using a click track in your recording process. So I'm going to hit play, and you'll see that it generates a signal in this click that goes to the beat. However, if I'm in the middle of recording, and somebody's telling me, hey, I don't want to hear that click anymore, I kind of just want to go off of whatever, or you're in the middle of playback, and you don't want to hear the click anymore, you just want to hear the track, what you can do in the middle of playback, or whenever you want, is hit 7 on the number pad, and it will disappear. The click track will remain, but the clicks themselves will disappear until you hit the 7 on the number pad again. And then they'll come back. This next shortcut will help guide you through the four modes of Pro Tools. I'm not going to go into exactly what all these four modes do. I'll be doing that in a future video. For now, just know that these four modes allow you to affect what's in your project differently. So again, there's two options for this one. You can either do F1, F2, F3, or F4, like this. Or you can do Option 1 through 4 on the number pad, like this. Next up is how to lock a clip in place while we're moving it to a different track. So say I want to take this clip right here of audio 4, and say I want to move it up to this track right here. So I click it and I drag it, and oh, it's, it's off. I messed it up. Oh no. What I can do instead is I can hold control and drag it up, and no matter which way I drag it, it's going to go right there. Guaranteed. This works particularly well if you're in slip mode, because if you're not holding control, it can be very easy to move this thing around. 
There is a bit of a little natural lock. Even without holding control, I can move it around a little bit. But once you've broken that, then there's no way of knowing. Oh, I think it's right there. And then you zoom in and it's not. Our next shortcut will allow us to make new playlists. So we select a track right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do control backslash. And that's the key right above return on the keyboard. And then we type in the name of our playlist, new to whatever. And there we go. This next one is actually incredibly useful even though you might not think it is just by hearing it. So say as you've gone through the session, you've gone up here and changed the size of the waveforms so you can see what something looks like better. But then at the end of it, you're like, okay, was this zero? Was this zero? Where was normal? I don't know. Maybe it was here. And then maybe you're also zoomed in a lot and you just want to reset everything back to where it was. So if you want to set horizontal zoom and vertical zoom back to zero, there's two ways of doing it. The easy way, go over here to the zoom tool, double click on it. It's back to where it was. These are the exact size of the waveforms and you get to see the whole project at once. There's nothing to the right. There's nothing to the left, this is everything. The other way to do it, if we're back in here again, is to hit option A. That'll bring you back to normal too. I think the better way to remember it is to double click on the zoom tool because it's the zoom tool. You know that double clicking on it means bringing it back to normal. Our next shortcut is for a very useful tool if you're trying to get rid of some bleed. So let's go to this clip right here. We're gonna hit command U. That brings up the strip silence menu. So what it means is, if we zoom in right here, it's going to tell us where all the silence is, and it's going to cut all of that out. Now you can make adjustments here as necessary, but that's not what this video is about, so I'm just going to say strip. And there we go. Now all of that bleed that we potentially had is gone. So this next shortcut is useful for editing together two pieces of audio. So say these two clips are not from the exact same recording. They're from two different recordings, I'm trying to mash them together. One way to smooth that transition is to make a crossfade. So for this, we're going to select the region that encapsulates this divide right here, and we're going to hit Control Command F. And that makes a crossfade in between those two clips for as long as you selected. So it's pretty zoomed in there, so it might not be effective. Instead, let's make it a very huge crossfade. Never mind. Let's make it pretty big, but not that big. Control Command F. There we go. That's a good crossfade right there. So for this next shortcut, we're going to go back over to the mix window here real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the kick all the way to the overheads, and we are going to hit Command G. And that is going to allow us to create a group. I want to create a group of drums. There we go. Now when I hit one fader and I drag it down, they all come down. They are all grouped together. This button all the way in the bottom left corner over here will allow me to see what groups I've made. And if I right click it, I can modify it, go back to this menu and say what I want in each group. I can add more things to it, like I can add the scratch verse track to it. I mean, I shouldn't, but now it's in there. Okay, so this shortcut, this is your bread and butter right here. I've been doing this the whole video. I don't even know if you've noticed, but if I wanna to toggle between the mix and the edit windows, I'm hitting command equals. This is equals on the keyboard, not the number pad. And this, this you'll be doing this keyboard shortcut probably 4,000 times per mix. You use this shortcut more than any other. If you only remember one shortcut in this video, just remember command equals allows you to switch from edit and mix windows. It is much easier than dragging one down, trying to click on the other, and then you have to drag it down farther than before to grab the other one. It just doesn't make any sense. For this next one, we're going to go back over to the mix window and say we have our drum tracks over here. They're all at minus 3.8 decibels right now. I want them all at zero. Quick way to do that, especially since they're all grouped, I can just hold option and click the fader. Boom, they're all back at zero. Isn't that great? And now for my 25th and final keyboard shortcut, I'm actually going to be giving you like eight keyboard shortcuts. We're going to be making new tracks, and we're going to be making a lot of them. So to bring up the new track menu, you're going to hit Shift, Command, N. You're going to be presented with this little window right here. So right now it says one mono audio track. 
But what I really want are three, that's easy enough, just type three. I want three stereo auxiliary tracks. So I could just click on these drop down menus, but that's cheating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit command right, command left and right changes between mono and stereo, and command up and down alternates between the type of track. So now an audio track, we go down, aux input, master fader, MIDI track, instrument track, and we're back at audio track. And we want three stereo aux inputs. And there's no reason to do this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Command option, if I wanted a stereo aux input in ticks, command option up and down allows you to change that. We're gonna keep it in samples. Okay, so that's great. We got three stereo aux inputs, but I'm not ready to hit create yet. In fact, I'm gonna create some more tracks. So we're gonna do command shift down to make another row. Command shift up and down will allow you to change how many different types of tracks you wanna add at once. So, okay, we've got three stereo aux inputs and samples. Now we're gonna do two mono uh, instrument tracks in ticks. Okay, that's great. Now we're gonna add one more. We're gonna do one mono um, audio track in ticks. That's great. And then after that, we're gonna add one stereo master fader. So now we've got all of this stuff and it's all there at once. The one thing I'm gonna point out to you now, if I said that I wanted one mono audio track before and then later on I realized, oh, I actually wanted two of those. Yes, I can hold command shift up to go back to it and then type a two. But then when I go back down, my mono master track or stereo master track is gone. I have to redo it. So if you're looking up three levels from where you were before and you're thinking, oh, I really gotta change that, don't just, just abandon your keyboard shortcuts. Just go and actually click on it and change it at that point. It's faster. And with that, I'm going to finally hit return, create those, and oh my god, I don't need any of this. And with that, I will end it right there. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, my name is Aston. If you learned something today, please hit the like button. There are some related videos on screen you can watch right now. Subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.